next we'll talk about the contingent demand for input at the Sheffer Lemma. So, <clears throat> okay, contingent demand is just the demand for labor and capital in so given the output level unchanging. So this is similar to the compensated demand curve in the utility maximization. So in the past, okay, you are using this Lagrangian to solve the optimal K and L. Okay. So in order to find the contingent demand for inputs, so first we need to calculate optimal K and L, so in the cost function. Then, if you want to find the contingent demand for capital and labor, okay, what you need to do is just partial C, partial V. Then you will get the contingent demand for capital as a function of V, W, and Q. Then you do the partial C, partial W, you will get the contingent demand for labor, again, as a function of V, W, and Q. Okay. So I will use two examples to show this is true. First is the <coughs> Leontief production function. As we know that <coughs> in the Leontief production functions, okay, so basically the K and L are the are just the corner, okay. So K is equal to Q over A. L is equal to Q over B at the optimal. Okay. So the cost function is just VK plus WL, which is equal to V times Q over A plus W Q over B. This is equal to Q times VA plus WB. So if we want to find a contingent demand for capital, this is equal to partial C, partial V. Okay, if we do partial C, partial V here, we will get Q over A. So this is exactly the amount of capital. Okay, so this is the way to find the contingent demand for capital. And labor is still the same way. Round C, round W, and I got W, uh, Q over B. So this is the labor demand. Next, let's talk about some more difficult concept, the cop calculus. Okay. So first, let's calculate the cost function of the cop Douglas. So we set up the Lagrangian. Then do the partial L partial K set it equal to zero. And I will get V minus lambda A K A minus one L B. Okay, then I partial Lagrangian partial labor say equal to zero. Then I get W minus lambda B K to the power A L raised to the power B minus one. Finally, I first order take the first order of the lambda. Okay, so by these two, I use the first one derived by the second one. I will get W over V equal to B over A, K over L. <coughs> then, K is equal to A over B, W over V times L. Next, I substitute this K into the output constraint. This is Q equal to this. So, I derive this to the left and take the power 1 over A plus B, I will get. <coughs> so, labor is equal to Q, this one. Okay, <coughs> then I put the labor to the K, okay, I will get capital equal to So this just 
basically the reverse of the so labor should be should be V over W because labor should be inversely related to wage okay so the the, the amount of capital should be just all, switching all the terms then we can see that C is the so total cost is equal to okay VK U times K by V U times L by W you will get some messy term okay total cost equal to <coughs> Okay, so this is the expression of the cost function for the Cobb Douglas. So if you want to verify the contingent demand is partial C partial K, what you need to do is try to derive the partial C partial V. Okay, to see whether this is equal to the contingent demand for capital. Then <coughs> If you do partial C partial V, okay, so this is just the basic calculus. Then this is equal to A over A plus B times all the multiplicative terms. Then V, I will become minus 1, that is minus B times W. Okay. <coughs> Then here you can see that our capital is some expression like this. Okay. So here are they equal? Okay. So you can see a plus b here. A sorry, a plus b p here can be cancelled. So let's put q raise raise about one derivative a plus b at the front. Okay. Second is a over b. Okay. This a times this one it will become a raised to the power b then b here i put the denominator okay so again this term are the same finally the w divided by v the raised to the power b over a minus a plus b so again this is the expressions so here again prove that we can do the partial C partial V to get to get the demand for capital so this lemma is called the Schaeffer lemma so this is called Schaeffer lemma in economics okay <coughs> so next we will take a look at the short run and long run distinction so in economics we can derive the development of the firm into short run and long run for short run we means we means that we have some fixed factors that means when the firm expand I need to keep some coins keep some factors fixed say I just add labor while I keep the machine unchanging so in the long run it means all other variables factors so usually we assume capital is fixed in the short run so just for traditions convention okay you can keep labor at keep labor fixed it. then you just you just move the var variable that is capital so here I assume that the cost is in short run okay so SC equal to VK sub 1 plus WL so sub 1 here means capital level capital level is fixed at K1 so we call this fixed cost and variable cost stay that for fixed cost, we means the cost for the fixed factor. So this is variable cost for the variable factors. <coughs> As you can see, if the firm just expand while keeping the fixed capital, okay. So capital is fixed at this level K1. 
as we can see that this is not the optimal say if the middle one is the optimal point okay so th this is tangent to the iso point then given the same slope you can see that okay this is not optimal well given it is constant return to scale and homophatic okay so this shear the same slope so we can see that okay So no matter any points, so the cost is not minimized in this case. So if we kick fixed capital, then in the short run, in the short run, the cost cannot be minimized. So okay, how we can move the short run to the long run? Well, before we talk about how to move the short run to the long run, let's further talk about two concepts the short run marginal cost and short run average cost so the short run's average cost is just short run total cost derived by Q while the short run marginal cost is partial SC partial Q so this is some usual, usual manner so short run total cost is a function of V, W, Q and K okay so how to transform the short run total cost to long run total cost since short run total cost is fixing the capital so if you allowed the capital move okay and select the capital that maximize minimize the short run total cost so this is the long run total cost <coughs> okay so let's take a look of some examples so this is the example of cop Douglas Okay, you are given the ISO points. So if you want to calculate short run total cost, first you need to express labor equal to Q over one Q raised to the power one over B times K one raised to the power negative A over B. By doing this, okay, why we want to do this? Because now K is fixed up. We do, we only have one variable, labor. So we better to put the variable to the left hand side to make the ease to make the math easy. So in this case, short run total cost is VK1 plus WL. That's equal to VK1 plus W times Q raised to the power 1 over B times K1 raised to the power negative A over B. Okay, I just replaced labor by this. So this is the short run total cost. So how to find the long run total cost? You partial SC partial K set it equal to zero. Then you will get V minus A over B times W Q Okay K negative A plus B over B. So here K is equal to V minus A over B times W Q Okay, then you have the capital. So you put the capital into the labor. Then you can see the total cost is equal to VK. K is V minus A over B times WQ raised to the power 1 over B. Then raised to the power B over A plus B plus WL. So WL, WL is WQ raised to the power 1 over B times K. So K is equal to V minus A over B WQ raised to the power 1 over B. And the whole term raised to the power Okay. then you can simplify it finally you'll get that the cost function is q over a plus b okay you just you just group this q and this q then v w times a plus b times a raised to the power negative a over a plus b times b raised to the power negative b over a plus b okay 
So this is just the usual the to long run total cost functions in the Cobb Douglas. So we'll finish the cost function.